Hey everybody, welcome back to Chortle Cast. I'm one of your hosts, Jake, and with me as always, the Stream King, the Far Cry Guy, the Man Who May Cry Devil, and the man who killed two two sharks and wore one of their heads. Shark bait himself. Ooh ha ha ha, indeed. Steven. What's up, buddy? What's up? I'm 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 doing well. I'm glad. It's Sunday as we're recording this. I'm glad that it is the second half of Sunday. Let me tell yeah. you. Yeah. Sundays are my Mondays. I'm glad I, we are here. I I understand that completely. I actually, my my Sunday is not over. I still have to go uh, do some more stuff after this. So it, it just, the ball keeps rolling. But I'm glad, I'm glad you're on the in, the back half of that. So, yes. uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Shortlecast, the official podcast of Chortle Games, where we talk about video games, TV shows, movies, anime, Whatever the heck we want to talk about. We got a great show for you this week. Uh, we skipped last week because of the holiday, Father's Day, all that good stuff. So we've got some stories that are kind of left over from last week. But then we got a lot to talk about this week. A we've lot kinda, happened this week. Oh, man. <laughs> we've, we've narrowed it down. So we're not even going to talk about everything that happened this week. But we are going to talk about Star Wars Squadrons. We're going to talk about uh, Cyberpunk being delayed. And then some of the news that came along with the uh, first Cyberpunk City Wire uh live stream and then we're going to talk about the marvel's war table uh event that happened we some exciting stuff happened there and then uh, for catch up i'm going to talk about last of us part two and pokemon uh isle of armor dlc for sword and shield and then steven is going to talk about gunfire uh is it raft or the raft i think it's just raft i think it's just raft uh, raft, and then uh, there was one Out, other one. Outward, outward. So lots. Been playing and a lot of stuff. The, the Steam Summer Sale started this week, so it's that time of year, you know. It's that time of year, y'all. The Steam train is rolling. Uh, before we do that, though, we have a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, as many of you may or may not know, we have a little series we do on this channel called Forward Compatible, where we take a game that we haven't played in at least five years. And we do a whole playthrough. We live stream it to see if it's forward compatible with who we are today. So uh, we do that. We, we usually do one game and, and then there's a review uh, as part of that. We do a review once a month. Uh, we pick a game. We play it all month. We live stream it for you. There's a review at the end to see if it holds up. All that good stuff. Uh, July is upon us. It, it is in next next week. Well, actually, this week, uh, this Wednesday, yeah. it'll be it'll be July. So we got to pick Crazy. our game. Got to get that rolling. So yeah, so, something there's there, we're, we we hit a conundrum, a predicament, if you if you might say, with the fact that we we try to make the forward compatibles that we do. We try to make them somewhat uh, relevant. topical, relevant, mm-hmm. um, because. Like, like around this time of year, it being summer, there's a lot of gaming news happening. So we've, mm-hmm. we've, we try to think like, what, what, what will be talked about? Like, Cause if people are looking at the future of this franchise, for example, then why don't we take a look back at the past while we're looking forward? Right. Um, so Ubisoft is doing their Ubisoft forward. Um, is that what it's called? Something like that? Yes. Yeah. Ubisoft uh, forward. Yeah. They're doing that July 12th. That is far too late for us to pick a game. To start something, yeah. Especially if it's a forward compatible because Ubisoft games are almost all open world and and long. Mm -hmm. Um, So we decided um, that we would take it up to a vote um, from games that we are either are like fairly confident or sure that they will talk about at the Ubisoft forward so that we can be playing something that they will have probably mentioned when we're halfway through playing mm-hmm. it it's 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 a risky it's a risky move which is why we're making you guys pick right like <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say we're all about risky business here at chortle games yeah. but that that i like that line better just <laughs> we're gonna make you guys pick take the risk we're, there was a brief time this is a complete side row there was a brief time speaking of ubisoft mm-hmm. in which our division two clan was called cruise control and we all took nicknames that were based on tom cruise movies yeah and i was risky business there you go <laughs> i was just about to say i thought y'all were, you were about to say y'all your clan name was risky business so uh that's awesome uh but yeah so we're gonna put that up to a vote in our discord uh you can get to our discord uh in the description of this video uh or if not you can always go to chortlegames.com and there's uh in the banner there's a button for the discord that'll get mm-hmm. you there 
Uh, we'll put it uh, put it in one of the channels there, probably something with forward compatible or live stream voting, something like that. It'll probably uh, go in the forward compatible channel. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah but it's uh, there. Just go vote there. Uh, it's probably, I think we've talked about Far Cry 2. We've talked about uh, Watch yeah, Dogs. Far Cry um, 2, Watch Dogs 1, um, Rainbow Six Vegas, and um, what was the fourth one? Uh, Splinter Cell Conviction. So probably one of those. There might be an additional one in there, but go vote. Let us know what you think, and then that'll be what we'll play. We'll probably announce that next podcast, and then yeah. and then start after that. So very exciting stuff, guys. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive in. We got plenty to talk about. Let's start off with Star Wars Squadrons. This is a new Star Wars game from EA, uh, and it's a uh, it's a what is what is the what was the old one? It was Rogue uh, Rogue uh, Shooter. You, <laughs> that sounds like such a generic title for like like a Something mobile like game that, right? um you're thinking rogue squadron rogue squadron but this it. is less rogue squadron more x-wing tie fighter or x-wing alliance steven you are our resident star wars big boy so i have gonna... never heard that name before that's that you're thinking of somebody else but i mean i know a good bit about star wars so there i can go. talk about it Talk, okay. t- tell me about cool. Star Wars Squadrons, because I thought it looked pretty cool. But So I haven't looked up too much about Star Wars Squadrons. I saw snippets from their reveal. I ended up having to turn off the EA Play, whatever it was called, um, you know, before they started talking about Squadrons, because they know how to bury the lead. <laughs> um, but basically, back in the 90s, there, uh, there were uh, ga- uh, th- these games called, uh, I think it was X-Wing versus TIE Fighter was one of them. Mm-hmm. There was Star Wars TIE Fighter, um, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, and then there was X-Wing Alliance. I'm pretty sure X-Wing Alliance was like the peak of these games. Mm-hmm. And back then, you know, PC gamers, they had the joystick with all the different buttons and everything, and they would play like flight simulators. My dad even played flight simulators back in the day um with a joystick what for whatever reason that was really big early 2000s late right. 90s mm-hmm. um so squadrons uh star it's just star wars squadrons yes yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay it's emulating that but in the modern day so mm-hmm. it is always first person and that's where it really differentiates itself from rogue squadron which was first or third person mm. this is all first person and a lot of people are like no that's stupid i hate that i don't want it but i'm just over here like Yes. Ex- excellent. Because how much more interesting is it to be in a dogfight when you can when you're in the perspective of the pilot? Yeah. That's so much cooler. Um and I'll admit like the few times I've played like Star Wars Battlefront uh in in, in space combat, the few times I've played it, I have found myself switching between third and first just for the sake of peripheral, but mm-hmm. to me it's much more interesting to force the players to be first person because then it's going to be a hard adjustment, but once mm-hmm. you get good, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a lot more immersive too. And that's the one yeah. the one thing that I'm kind of excited about with this game is that it's going to be compatible with VR. So yeah. so PlayStation VR users are going to be able to use this. I am th- pumped about that fact. I I am too. Like that's probably honestly that's probably the reason I'm I'm going to get it. For mm-hmm. me, just because I want to do that and see what that's like, because um, so, I bet that's going to be crazy. I didn't actually know that it was it was only first person. I kind of assumed. Yeah, that makes they, me feel they, better. They about. did confirm, but and it's it, it's interesting how they're doing this, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, but first, it sounds like it's five v five. There is a campaign. I'm hoping that they do some kind of bot support mm-hmm. um, or co op of some kind because. I want this game. Mm -hmm. I am pretty turned off if the only way to not do PVP is the campaign. Mm. Um, But I mean, good on them for including a campaign at all to begin with. Uh, But it looks like you are going to be the rebels and the Imperials. Rebels Mm -hmm. are going to have X wings. Uh, U U wing is the blue one from Rogue One, right? Or my is it's not V wing. I think it's the U wing. It's the tra- the transport basically. Yeah. Uh, um. The one they the ones they went to Scarif one. So X wings, U wings, Y not not Y wings. No, yeah, Y wings. I was thinking B wings because Rebel fighters are so so confusing sometimes. So X wings, 
Y wings, <laughs> U wings, and A wings. Um, those are like the f- well. With Rogue One, those are the more four most famous fighters. And then the Imperials have the TIE Fighter, the TIE Bomber, the TIE Interceptor, and then the – I think there's one more. But basically, there is a class system of your fighter. I think they showed um, off eight ships in the uh, in the, yeah. in the demo. And it was four per uh, faction. Mm-hmm. Um, so and, and those have classifications. Mm-hmm. Um, like the Y-Wing and the TIE Bomber are your bomber. Mm-hmm. Um, the A wing and the interceptor are your, I guess you'd call them interceptors. They're, they're the best at dog fights, but mm-hmm. they can't really do much objective damage probably. Um, then X wing and the regular tie fighter, are your, your middle ground. And then the U wing and whatever it is for the Imperials, that's your support fighter. Um, and these all function differently. Uh, and this is the thing that I was talking about. We, we talked about this before the show, um, how, like, would I have a lot to say about this? <laughs> Guys, he asked me if I'd have a lot to say about a Star Wars game. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> who, who do you think you're dealing with here? This is this is Star Wars guy. It's no, it's the Star <laughs> Wars big boy is what it is. There's a reason no, I gave you that name. <laughs> no, no, I don't I don't recall. Um, but uh, the, the developers in an interview, they were asked about. They were uh, they were like, hey. X-Wings and TIE Fighters are not equal. Mm -hmm. Um, And they were just like, yeah, that's correct. And they were like, well, what's your thought process behind that? Doesn't it make it then to where if you play as the Rebels and you have the X-Wing and you're going up against an Imperial pilot that has the TIE Fighter, aren't you at a disadvantage? And they responded in like the perfect way, in my opinion. They were just like, you know, that was a concern of ours. Um going into making this game, but we looked at old forums of pro players of X-Wing Alliance, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, all that kind of stuff to see what their thought process was because Mm -hmm. that, that game is like the Holy Grail. Like all those games are the Holy Grail of how to, how to do this. If you're going to make a star Wars fighter simulator, you confront those, you you, um, consult those games. Um, And the, the justification that they, they concluded by reading these forums was that, Tied fighter pilots, it would just for those that don't understand, um, X-Wings have shield generators, uh, proton torpedoes, I think. I get those confused. They've, basically, they've got some sort of missile, a shield generator, four cannons, just all this stuff. X-Wings are, are mm-hmm. decked out. They're just excellent spacecraft. The TIE fighter has basically uh, twin laser cannons, and then they call it a day. <laughs> they don't have any shield generator. I don't know if they have torpedoes or any kind of missiles. Mm-mm. Um, but they're really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they said that, that pro players basically came to the consensus that tie pilots have a lot less to manage mm. because when you're flying an X wing, you have a limited number of resources, whether you divert power to engines, shields, bl- lasers, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's more of like, you've got more, but you have more to do. Mm-hmm. And tie pilots can just be like, you know what? I got my two wings. I got my two guns. I'm good. <laughs> Um, he flew, so, flew and, and pew pew. And so I thought that was interesting because you never really see that today when it comes to mm-hmm. a game that boasts competitive play. Uh, like Battlefront 2 is a good example of this. Playing the separatists, the, like the battle droids, like playing those classes mm-hmm. feels basically the same as playing the Republic, mm-hmm. even though the factions are completely different. You never really see that. And so I'm really pleased to see that they're kind of sticking to canon as much as they can. Mm hmm. Um, while still justifying the balance. Um, so I that was enough to make me be like, "Oh, okay, I'm listening." Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if if it wasn't for that, I probably would have been like, "Yeah, let's see how EA screws it up." Which supposedly they're not doing microtransactions. There's not DLC. I don't think or something like that. Um, so it's, we'll see it how sounds it goes. great, mm-hmm. but. Let's see how EA screws it up. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see how they screw it up. Well, speaking of things, hopefully not being screwed up, let's talk about Marvel's Avengers uh, by Square Enix. Uh, We had the War Table. uh, I don't even know what to call these things. Digital event. We had the War Table event uh, where they showcased uh, some new gameplay. We got some Thor gameplay. Um, we talked a little bit about co-op and how every character is going to have a support ability that you can use with teams. 
Uh, we talked about um, it's not war table, but it's war, war time, zones. war zone. Thank you. War times. War times. <laughs> uh, we talked about the war zone, which is the co- uh, the co op missions, uh, and then we got to see the new villain, uh, Modok. So he's going to be the main villain. Uh, basically, just lots and lots of stuff uh, that happened. Um, I'll, I'll talk about some of the stuff that made me excited. Give you a minute to catch your breath, Stephen. Um, uh, what I'm really excited about, uh, first off, I think the story continues to be really, really interesting. Um, uh, with Modok being revealed as the villain, I think that that's going to be really, really interesting to see what they do with him. Cause he's such like a, I think people who don't read the comics probably have seen Modok at some point, just in, in the peripheral, like in the periphery of all that's happening. Um, but they like we I I haven't seen like a mainstream thing that yeah. like really took advantage of him. So picking him as the main villain, it was really really interesting. I think it's a good way. It's good that it, that they didn't do like uh, Thanos or someone else like huge. Yeah. Like um, Ultimate Ultimate Alliance was great, but it very right. clearly was like let's do what the movies did. Mm-hmm. Um, and and what I like about Modok, why he I think he was the perfect choice, is because he is a villain that comic book fans love, and they've mm-hmm. been wanting for a while. But he's also a villain that I feel like everyone's pretty confident we're not going to see in the MCU anytime soon because it's really <laughs> hard to translate a giant egg shaped head uh-huh. man in a robot suit into into a live movie. action film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it was smart because. They continue to to ingrain in our in our thoughts like this is not the MCU. Mm-hmm. Stop thinking it's the MCU. And that's what they need to do. Right. Yeah. They've got to differentiate themselves a little bit. But um, anyway, we uh, so th- probably the biggest thing that we got to see was um, gameplay of Thor. And so um, my biggest concern right now with the game on paper, it sounds awesome. Like everything they were talking about, I'm really into. There's a lot of customization they talked about. Um, But watching the gameplay of Thor, I cannot pinpoint what it is that bothers me about it, but it just feels off. And I don't know, I don't know what that is. Um, I've kind of been saying, you know, we'll see how it is when I've got sticks on it. Um, Once I have, once I'm playing, maybe it'll feel right and it'll feel better. Um, but just watching it, it didn't feel smooth. Like, like one thing, um, Thor can kind of like can float and, and like fly a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it very much felt like you could either, you could either hover or take off. And, and there wasn't a smooth in between of like, let me hover faster or, you know, I, I don't know, or, or fly slower. It was just it just felt weird. And so I'm, I'm, I've, I can't wait to play it and see if it feels better. And I'm sure they're still polishing and cleaning up stuff. Um, but that was my biggest concern and takeaway. But Steven, I know you were very excited because they talked a lot about support <laughs> abilities and just some co-op stuff. So what, what, what talk to me about what you kind of so, took away from so it. So to me, this, this digital uh-huh. event was a slam dunk in my mm-hmm. opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, because we got to see more from the story, which continues to sound really interesting. Um, and it's an Avengers story, but they're going to territory that fans of comic books have wanted to go for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but people who only follow the MCU uh, hear Inhumans and they cringe. <laughs> um, <laughs> rightfully so. Mm-hmm. But the fact that we're getting a true Avengers story um, that is completely like ingrained uh, rooted. That's the word I'm looking for rooted mm-hmm. in in humans and the, the Terrigen mists is a great foundation um, because you can do so much with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm, I'm really happy to see that's where we're headed. Um, I don't understand the hate that the, iterations of these characters are getting because people are saying, Oh, they look like the porn parody versions of the Avengers. Like, okay. They don't look like Chris Evans or Robert Downey Jr. So what? This is not the MCU. And I thought that I'd have a problem with the Nolan North as Tony. Mm -hmm. 
He does a great Tony. It's not a Robert Downey Jr. Tony, but it's a great Tony. But it's a great Tony. Um, and same with um, Troy Baker. I said this when we streamed Destiny on Thursday. Mm-hmm. I said that I was a little disappointed that they didn't make Troy Baker Captain America. Mm-hmm. Because I thought, man, that would have been a great dynamic. Uh, uh, Troy Baker and Nolan North being Captain America and Iron Man. Because uh, I, I, I know Troy Baker originally from Guild Wars 2 where he was Logan Thackeray, which was a good parallel to Captain America. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I realized after watching this, it, I was just like, you know, I'm guilty of the thing that, that I'm everyone else is guilty of. I'm 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 looking at it to MCU. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when I when I watched this trailer and Troy Baker as Bruce Banner was able to, like, perform, mm-hmm. I just was like, man, that was such a better decision <laughs> than making Troy Baker Captain America because he's got that soft voice. Uh huh. That can also like growl, you know, Mm -hmm. and 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 he just has such a good (laughs) handle on on Bruce Banner or Hulk. I'm curious to see if he did the voice for Hulk. That's that's Uh, surely surely. I'm just I'm I'm laughing at the what you just said is like he's got a soft voice, but it can growl. (laughs) Yeah, I wasn't happy with with the wording when I said how that how that wording came out. yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Took a shot. I missed. No, um, no. It, so, it landed. Uh, and another thing, just about the – the because I'm just doing like a highlights, I guess. I love the way they talked about the game. Like they being Crystal Dynamics. Yeah. They they were just like fans of the comics will know MODOK from from these comic books or, mm-hmm. and uh, advanced idea mechanics. And and sure, you can do the, the whole thing where you – sound like you know what you're talking about with with all this kind of stuff because that's what you're supposed to do mm-hmm. but i really felt like they knew what they were talking about mm-hmm. i felt like these people making this game have read a comic book right they like these characters and they have since before they were the biggest film industry in the world right um and they so talk, that was they really did that a little bit too when they were talking about outfits and stuff they were pulling right. out comic references and all right. that and um and so that was encouraging. That that's that's a small thing to a lot of people, but to me, it's a big thing because then it shows that the passion is there, mm-hmm. um, at least for some of the people involved. And if the passion is there, the game will be eventually, at least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, all that stuff was good. Um, I like I love the sound of War Zones. I'll talk about gameplay last. Okay, um, I'm almost there. Um, I love the sound of War Zones. Um, the, the idea of what they're going for with the game is that the, the campaign, each level you play as one of the core heroes, mm-hmm. which right now is Hulk, Thor, Black Widow, uh, Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Captain America is around. Mm-hmm. He's not he's not dead. Like, come on. <laughs> they're 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 doing another uh, marketing scheme here. He's yeah. going to be in there. We literally saw a little bit of gameplay of him at E3 of last year. Right. Like. He's going to be there. But Surely he's not there for just that one fight. That would be right. sad. Right. Um, so Captain America is around. Um, but, oh, and real quick, Thor is voiced by the same guy who voices Colonel Mustang on uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and he does a fantastic Thor. Wait a second. So All Might. That's, you're thinking... Um, uh, gosh, what's his name? The the muscle guy. Yeah. Mustang's wait. the fire guy. Thank you. There you go. Now I'm yeah. caught up. Roy Mustang. Was he Colonel? I thought it was Colonel. A Roy. Yeah, I know, I know where you're at now. I, I, now, I'm caught now I now I can't stop thinking of what the name is of the muscular guy. It's like just, he does the handsome alchemy or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something like um, that. Armstrong. Armstrong. Armstrong, thank you. Yep. Um, but but he does a great Thor. Um, uh, Mustang does. Um, so War Zones is is going to be what happens after you play the main story, with each level being one of those characters. War Zones is going to be where the the rest of the game takes place because they're going to mm-hmm. develop with more levels and story and stuff later on, and that's going to happen there. But the cool thing is you can play that with up to four players. And it sounds like you can double up on heroes. That's what it's impl- it's implied. We haven't seen that yet, but mm. it's kind of mm. implied. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. Don't quote me on it. 
Um, yeah, I would I would be very surprised if that was the case because I would think they would limit it to at least not doubling up because I would you would think if they're going to add more characters they'd want people to go back and play yeah. as those new characters See, in I'm, those missions. I'm hoping you can't double up, mm-hmm. but I feel like they may have just made it for the sake of like we want players to feel like they're not limited. Mm -hmm. Um, something like that but but anyway um so you can play those with with a team with a team of up to four players um but also and this was more of a this was a sneaky thing that they said um if you play solo you can bring the ai that you bring to fill out your four-man squad is the can be the heroes that you've been leveling up and customizing yes they 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 worded it as copies of your characters yes so if you build your Thor as a tank, mm-hmm. you can bring your Thor as AI, mm-hmm. something like that, which I thought was a really cool idea. Um, I'm glad they did that. Um, yeah, and I really like that, too. Yeah, um, there, there were a bunch of like smaller things. Uh, I like the way they seem to be doing the different damage effects. It doesn't feel super generic to where it's like you've got your fire, your lightning and then your 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 ice like. There, yeah, when you open with gamma, that's pretty you know there's going to be a, a wide, wide variety yeah, there. There was gamma and then there was PIM. Mm-hmm. And like it, it, it's it's they're they're taking this concept, which is like a game that has the somewhat structure of destiny mm-hmm. where you've got the the loot and and the uh, and the missions and the progression, and all that kind of stuff, that general core concept. And it, it's like they're answering it in every way that they should of how mm-hmm. do we make that an Avengers game mm-hmm. or a Marvel game? Um, and so I'm encouraged by that. And, and as far as the gameplay is concerned, I, I understand it looking off because mm-hmm. it, it, it does. And I think a lot of it, a lot of it might be because the gameplay they showed very much looked like a person playing the game who did not rehearse the E3 demo <laughs> a ton. <laughs> Cause like if you watch gameplay of, Last of Us Part Two, when they did that reveal of the of gameplay at E three of mm-hmm. either last year or the year before that, it was smooth. Mm-hmm. They didn't they didn't make a mistake. Um, same with stuff like Spider Man or, or uh, Ghost of Tsushima or maybe God of War. I don't know, but mm-hmm. here it and and I and I was I was intrigued by this. I I actually liked the gameplay better because of this fact. But it looked like someone actually playing the game. Mm-hmm. They got hit. They messed up combos occasionally it looked believable Mm -hmm. um and it does look stiff and it does look kind of kind of blocky to where like it's not very fluid and Mm -hmm. i I think that Mm -hmm. may be what what seems off to you whereas like in spider-man just using that as an example because it's another marvel action game in spider-man you're moving from hit to hit to combo to combo to counter and execution all that kind of stuff but in this game it seems like there may be a lot of moments of stillness where you stand there and just kind of like figure out, okay, okay, what do I do? Mm -hmm. Uh, And, and like there, there's not perfect flow from animation to animation. I think that's a lot of what it is. Yeah. Um, That, that would make sense. And and a lot of that, I think they can smooth out. And I also think once you're playing it, it's going to feel better, but who knows? We'll see. Yeah. And I, I, I am thrilled about what I've heard, but you know, it's, it's all about, can they deliver? Um, and I have more faith in them now by a pretty good bit um, than I did before the war table. And that's encouraging. Um, and also they did say last thing, um, there will be more levels. Their next war table, they're going to talk about the first post launch character. Yep. And as far as I know, and they did say this, but I don't know if it was confirmed that this is for levels and characters and everything, but post launch content will be free. Right. That's exciting. I mean, they're saying all the right things, you know, they, they another are. thing we, we didn't talk about this, but they, uh, they also said that, um, if you buy it on PS4, yes, when available, yes. the PS5 version will be an upgrade that you can get for free. Even if you get it on disc, even if you get it on disc. Yeah. Yep. yep. Which I think is a very smart, we're, we're going to talk about Cyberpunk here in a minute. They're doing something very similar to that as well. I think for people that are coming out this holiday season or, or this fall, 
That is a very smart thing to do. And it's a very pro consumer move. Um, obviously, you know, every other generation, they've just said, you got to buy it again, you know, um, or, you know, and, and the, at the very least, at least most of the games that are going to be in this transition period are going to be playable, are going to be backwards compatible. Right. Um, but to, to say, Hey, you could have bought this on the new system, but, but you pre-ordered to, to be there day one, we're going to let you upgrade to a better version later. That I, that's just such a great pro game move so great transition point um oh sorry real quick i just derail my transition point please sorry uh i'll I'll transition for you again uh but i just learned by by looking at the uh, looking up stuff for avengers there will be um two tie-in books for the game Mm -hmm. the first one the extinction key will be released on august 4th um also the novel will include this ga- the game's version of Doctor Strange and Brother Voodoo. <sighs> that is a big deal for me. <laughs> that is a big deal for Steven. Steven so, really wants Doctor Strange. I really want Doctor Strange in this game. <laughs> like but but we that's were talking interesting. about I don't know remember where we were talking about this. Maybe it was in Destiny. Maybe it might have it, been it after was. the live stream. But we were I, when Steven said that I was like can you just imagine the the support abilities from Doctor Strange mm-hmm. and Steven was just like, ah, like he'd I've be a great him. like team support and crowd control mm-hmm. character. He'd be so fun. But I'm really excited about this because it's it's this first book is going to be a uh, prequel to what happens at a day. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's cool. I'm, I'm actually going to pick that up and read it. That'll be exciting. Yeah. Speaking of things that you can pick up and read, I don't know. It's not a good transition. Uh, um, Cyberpunk 2077. Speaking uh, of picking it up, let's pick up where we left off before Stephen rudely interrupted. I like that better. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 had their first, uh, I think it was Night City Wire or City Night Wire. I, get, I think it's I get, Night City Wire. Night City Wire, yeah. uh, which is their kind of <clears throat> game showcase, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it, it was episode one, so there are more of these to come. I feel like at the very end, they gave us a date for the next one. I want to say it's sometime in July. Anyway, I digress. Um, they showed off more of the game. They had a new trailer um, that showed a lot of gameplay. Um, they they showed off, they, they had some developers to come in and talk about side quests and the story involved, and then they showed a, an extensive section on this new, um, I don't know, it, I guess an ability is not the right word, but like this new thing you can do uh, called brain dancing. I bl- I'm pretty sure that's what it was called, brain dancing. Uh, and it's basically just, um, it's not anything wildly new, uh, but basically you can relive the memories of someone who's passed um, through like a device that was implanted in their brain. And so in the world, the lore of it is people will do crazy stuff and re- have that device implanted and they'll sell, they'll sell that experience as like uh, something that people, almost like a movie, will just go watch and, and live, you know? Um, so like some people get addicted to the experience of death and just will will you know it's almost like death porn um they mentioned there is <laughs> that that people use that as porn too like they did just you say death experience. porn i did say death porn okay <laughs> that's what they that's what they talked about it like this is just basically that people got addicted to just these living people's deaths is is what they said anyway you, they, you use it as almost like a detective mode um, where you're watching this happen and you're trying to figure out what, what happened. It had a very altered carbon um, kind of feel to it. Yeah. Um, anyway, but it, it was a very weird thing for me that they spent so much time on it because it's not an entirely... Like, I feel like Watch Dogs, we've watched footage um and then like hacked a camera that we maybe didn't have access to and then oh look there was this phone that was on the person let's see if we can hack yeah, that you, when, when that. you hack the ctos servers you can access all the cameras around the city so you may see like 
a footage of a guy playing Assassin's Creed in his living room or right. unfortunately footage of a couple having sex. Right. Or, uh, you know, yeah, whatever else. So it's not it's not an entirely like new thing. But anyway, they, they showed how you can basically you have a free camera to experience all angles of what the person is experiencing. And they solve a mystery a little bit like uh, basically the 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 scene that we watch. It's this guy who I'm pretty sure they're doing this with the intention to sell the uh, the content. But anyway, they, this guy robs a bank and then as he le- or robs a convenience store and as he leaves, he gets shot. But we didn't see who the, sh- the shooter was. Um, but when they replay the memory and you spin the camera around, you see who shot him like through the reflection in a mirror um, that was out of view. Um, so it's but- more like um, Minority Report. Yeah, something like that. But anyway, really, really interesting feature. I just thought it was I thought it was interesting that they spent time yeah. demoing that specifically um when i but i don't know it's whatever the thing I, the biggest takeaway i had from this is this game is not only wide but it's deep like yep. the lore and just the layers and layers of lore and world building that they've already done is wild um, a lot of um, outlets have gotten to do, you know, a four hour demo um, where they played from the very beginning. And um, it's interesting I, if you haven't gone and looked at it. I don't know. I know, Steven, you're trying to go in dark. Um, but uh, if you haven't seen any of those guys, you can go watch that. But what's interesting is everybody has a completely different experience because at the beginning of the game, you pick your backstory, your origin story. And so I, I, I don't know if there are more than this, but I know there's one where you're just a street rat, where you're just a kid in the city who is on the streets. Um, you know, you're you're doing whatever street kids do. And then um, there's one where you're an outland, like an out uh, outlander, an outsider who you live in the the Badlands and you you are going to work your way into the city. Um, or you can be a corporate goon and you can start like at a high, as a goon for like a high level executive. Um, and then the sto- I assume the story, wherever you start, you're going to converge at a certain point and yeah. that's where the story is going to happen. But anyway, it's just, it's been very, very interesting watching that. I'm, I'm so, so excited about this game. It's going to be something mm-hmm. that is just going to take over when, when it starts, but I talked a lot, Stephen. What do you? Uh, what do you? What were your kind of? I know. I don't know if you watched this, but I know you're very excited about I, Cyberpunk. I, I did. I didn't watch it. Um, I'm. I have a general kind of rule, mm-hmm. uh, except for when I don't. <laughs> um, where it, with some games like Spider Man for PS4, for example, or mm-hmm. Ghost of Tsushima, um, if I get to a point where I see enough for a game single player game Mm -hmm. um that i'm just like oh yeah i'm definitely buying this i stop looking up stuff for it and if i unless if it's like at a big day event like if it was hey come watch this stream where we'll talk about this game this game this game and this game like Mm -hmm. a like a state of play or something unless if it's there i don't watch it right um and Cyberpunk has become one of those games because fairly early on, I, I, I realized that like, oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna be getting this game. I'm gonna see if my PC can take it, mm-hmm. um, and I'm just gonna experience it. We're just yeah. gonna see what happens because it does seem like one of those games that it's gonna be a little terrifying how deep it actually goes, especially yeah. for someone for someone going in without lack of understanding of like, oh, I know what I'm gonna do first. I know mm-hmm. what I want to go for. For someone who experiences it as an approach of an immersive first-person RPG experience, mm-hmm. like I am expecting my mind to be blown with like the things that they thought of. Yeah, and going in without those expectations has me excited. I'm so excited, and I have expectations, and I'm so excited. It's going to be great. The last bit of news I forgot to mention, uh, but I thought about how funny it was in context, but. Uh, cyberpunk was delayed again it got delayed to november 19th 
Why um, do you as, think it did, Jake? I'll get there. As we mentioned, it is also it's going to be it's going to be playable on PS5, uh, and then once a uh, an upgrade to a PS5 version, if you will, uh, is available, you mm-hmm. can upgrade for free. That's great. Good move on them. Now so tell anyway, them yeah. what you did. So it got delayed again. So what's funny about that is <clears throat> when it first got delayed to September 17th, the day it was announced, my t-shirt for my Cyberpunk t-shirt came in and I tweeted or I snapped it to um, Brody and, and Miles and all them and Steven and uh, was like, got my new shirt. And like within seconds, Brody was like, crap that game just got delayed and i was like no so (laughs) literally like a day before this announcement my ghost of tsushima shirt came in and i sent a photo of all that to 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 steven and them and uh, i was just like hey here's my shirt and then i put in parentheses like braces for game delay Mm -hmm. expecting a ghost of tsushima delay little did i know it's just it's just cyberpunk. Anytime I buy clothing that's gaming related, apparently it's gonna delay cyberpunk. So I just gotta hold off on merch until we get to cyberpunk. That's what I'm saying. Just buy your merch after you've played the game. Goodness. I'm too Stop excited, ruining Steven. our lives. I'm too excited. It's too good. Um speaking of excited, let's jump into catch up, Steven. Let's talk about all the things we've been playing this week. You've got a bunch of stuff. So why don't you jump in with something? You I mean, can do something shorter if you wanna Start like, like I said, um, the Steam Summer Sale started this week. So if you're on PC, see what Steam's got for you. Um, chances are they've got a lot of stuff. Um, but I picked up uh, three games uh, this week. Uh, Outward, Raft, and Monster Sanctuary. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to talk about Monster Sanctuary because I haven't played it yet. But basically my understanding is that you play as... Um, it's like a 2D side scroller mm-hmm. with like Metroidvania kind of aspects to it, mm-hmm. but you can tame monsters. So you're basically it's Metroid Pokemon, basically <laughs> like you That's tame cool. a, a team of monsters. You can level them up and, and choose their skill trees and stuff. And you can battle other teams of monsters. Um, really interesting concept, but I saw it. It was 12 bucks. And I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, Raft. I played last night with, uh, well, Saturday night with Jeremy. That was a ton of fun. Um, I really hope it comes to console so I can force Jake to play it. Although by the sound of it, it won't be hard. I was going to say, you don't have to force me at all. When it comes out on console, I will force you to play it. I have been wanting to play this, but it's, uh, you know, obviously it's not on console. You really should, Jake, you really should try downloading Steam on your Mac or whatever computer because you've got a good Mac. I mean, I have it. A lot of these good games don't require that much. Like, I don't know about Raft. It probably has a pretty high threshold for, like, um, CPU or something. But mm-hmm. if you've got a computer that can render video, like export, um, like, big video files and everything, then your computer can probably run these kinds of games with little trouble. Uh, but there is the issue of Mac compatible or not. But you should you should look into that because there are a lot of games that I would, that I would love for us to be able to play. Um, but some of them, like Gunfire Reborn, for example. I don't know if that's ever coming to console, <laughs> which leads me into uh, Gunfire Reborn. <laughs> um, and I'll talk about this one. You can talk about your thing. But um, Gunfire Reborn, uh, I got it last week, week before, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is I'm looking for if it's Mac compatible or not. I don't see Mac compatible anywhere. Stop it. Stop it. Go away. Um, it is. Imagine borderlands Mm -hmm. if it was a roguelike where you play as animals that have guns right um Mm -hmm. right now you can play as a cat that is also a prince i think that uses magic kind of um so up my alley he is my favorite character right now although there are only two characters um right now but they will add more the other one is a dog that dual wields guns and uses a lot of explosives he's great um but it's a ton of fun. Like it's mm-hmm. 12 bucks full price. Uh, and people are saying like in the reviews, it's a crime that this game is only $12. <laughs> um, but yeah, strong recommend there. I can't really talk much about it. it it's, it's an early access title mm-hmm. that 
is twelve dollars, which is extremely cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it's not Mac compatible. Gotcha. Stupid. 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 I thought I had the Steam Store downloaded. I just I just downloaded the install. I have to put it back in. I think when I did like a full clean of my Mac, I just yeah. removed it because I was not using it at all. But right. I'll I'll look and see about the raft because I, I do want to play that one. Yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Gunfire Reborn. We streamed it last week. Mm-hmm. It's just a ton of fun. I love a good roguelike, mm-hmm. um, especially one that has um, a sense of progression. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's more roguelite than roguelike. Um, but really enjoying it. Glad I got it. Uh, strong recommend. Strong revenge. <laughs> strong revenge. Re- strong revenge. Speaking of strong revenge, let's talk about Last of Us Part Two. Uh, that's what I've been playing mostly. Um, I'll just preface: I'm not going to get into spoilers here. This is going to be my top level thoughts after playing almost all of the game. I'm I'm very close to beating it. Um. Steven, who has read spoilers and, and just kind of what a synopsis of the story. Um, we just were talking beforehand and I, I'm very, very close. I thought I was going to beat it um, before this podcast, but then it kept going. <laughs> so uh, anyway, all I have to say, top level thoughts here. I, I will talk a little bit about a side story that I want to get into just to talk about how much I love the stories in this game. But I'll let you know when I get to that. So anyway, top level thoughts. I really, really enjoy the gameplay of this game. Um, This is so much more fun to play than Last of Us. Um, Especially, and it's funny, I'm so glad we did a forward compatible um, of this so close to to the release of because so much was just fresh on my mind. Um, and just so many things I, I could look at and be like, wow, this is so much better than the game than the first one. Or like, oh, look, that's a callback to whatever. Anyway, um, highly recommend playing both somewhat close to each other if you can. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one is like 15 hours. It's not hard to do in one sitting. This one I would not recommend doing in one sitting if you can. If you could, if you can, I'd recommend it because I, it would probably make the story better. But it's long. I digress. Uh, gameplay is so much more fun. Um, the the being able to go prone, so so you can you can stand, you can crouch, and then you can lay completely flat. That is something that every game needs to have from now on. Like if you have any sort of stealth mechanic, that has to be a priority. If basically what I'm saying is, if you're gonna have a crouch, you need to have a prone because it's crazy how that changes the gameplay, especially from like a traversal standpoint, like going under things and, and like to even not even to get around, but like to hide, to, to get around things. Once you do it, it seems so second nature that I, I, I sit here and I'm like, why does no, why has no other game ever done this? Like this makes so much sense. Um, I found, that I'll, I'll find myself going prone and crawling around and like I'll shoot from prone position a lot because I can get right on the edge of the grass and take take people out and they'll never see me. Um, anyway, it's great. I love, love the gameplay. Um, I've liked the story so far. Um, I, I don't want to get, I don't want to comment on that very much because that's where I think the most spoilers would happen. I'm very interested to see how the story ends. And I really don't know that I can say that I'm going to, I don't know that I can say at this point that I've enjoyed the story as a whole until I really know what happens at the end. Um, Because to me right now, if a certain thing doesn't happen at the end, the rest of the story is kind of ruined. Not necessarily, well, not even the rest of the story. Part of the story is ruined and almost seems pointless to me. Uh, but I haven't gotten there yet, so I'm 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 gonna see what that is and withhold some judgment. But anyway, there's definitely some surprises in the story. There's some stuff I wasn't expecting, um, and that that's just a very broad statement. I mean, there's a lot of things I was not expecting in a lot of directions. Um, but all in all, it's a, it's a beautiful game. The music is awesome. Um, again, the gameplay is great, and the story is really good. But uh, something just to talk about the story, I'm gonna talk about a a side mission that almost everyone is going to come in contact with. 
Um, it's just the the varying degrees of how much you come in contact with it is going to be up to you, depending on how you play, if you read every lore piece, whatever. Um, I've been taking in the initiative with this with my playthrough to go very slow, to check every nook and cranny, to find and read in full every note. Um, and I'll, I'll just tell you right now, that's that's the way to play it, at least in my opinion, is to read the notes. Because there's so much detail and so much lore that's happening in little trinkets that you find. Um, and honestly, that's to me, that's where the game shines. Um, and I'm, I'm going to tell you about one of the best ones. Um, but again, it's it's one that everyone will bump into pretty early. So um, anyway, I call it Boris the Bowman. So, so spoilers for Boris the Bowman uh, moving forward. But um, basically how it starts out is you come into an area... And you're hiding from an enemy faction, and um, you start. I start looking around, and I, I end up in this basement. And there's a crafting table, and there's some supplies and stuff. But there's also this trophy for an archery, like a, like an Olympic archer thing. So I look, I go look at that, and Ellie's like, "Oh, this is cool," you know. And then I find a note, and it has this picture of this guy with a bow. And he's standing on top of a mountain of, of clickers, which are the zombie fungus creatures. And uh, it says, um, I forget the town, Haven's number one clicker killer or something. And then it said, love you, dad, love Sophia. and uh, Or happy birthday, dad. Happy birthday, dad, love Sophia. And so um, that, was, that was our introduction to Boris. And so as you explore the town, you start to see and find more notes that are um, basically just, hey, Boris, um, such and such happened or is going on. Um, you know, everybody looks up to you because you're such a, this great leader. You've, you've helped us all out um, to survive this, this uh, pandemic and, and, you know, whatever. And they talk about the wolves, which are one of the enemy factions that you're dealing with a lot in the game. Um, you know, this, ever since the wolves moved in, they haven't been the same. But, you know, everyone looks up to you, Boris. Can you help us? Can you do this? What can you do? Um, there's one one note talks about how Sophia, it's like, hey, Boris, you know, you need to talk to Sophia. She's getting a little too rebellious to the wolves. I just don't want her to get hurt. I just don't want something to happen. And then eventually you start finding notes that say, Boris, we're so sorry what happened to Sophia. But this, the town is looking to you. We're, we're going to support you. Um, but, but we need to, we don't want to, you know, upset the wolves. We don't want to be put off. Um, so anyway, you keep exploring and you find a room, uh, that has a safe in it. And when you open the safe or open the room, just tons of clickers start pouring out of that safe room and, and you kill them and whatever. And Ellie even comments like, what the heck happened here? Like, why are there so many clickers in this one tiny space. Um, well, eventually you find, or as you get to the end of this area, you find one last note and it's actually from Boris. And it's kind of like his last um, story. So basically, basically to sum it up, uh, he was a, a hero for his neighborhood, defended them from clickers. Um, when the wolves moved in, his daughter kind of rebelled against them because they were trying to be, they were a little bit of oppressive his daughter was killed, right? And then you find this last, and then and then you you find out that Boris is going against the wolves, a lot like Joel, kind of just snapping and just everything's over. You find the last note from Boris, and he basically explains how when Sophia died, he thought the neighborhood would rally with him and they would take on the wolves and, and he would get justice for his daughter. But what happened was, um, people conspired against him and didn't want to ruffle feathers. They wanted to move on. So he poisoned them so that they were like, so that they were drowsy and, and, and sleepy and stuff. He loaded them all into that room with a clicker. So this entire neighborhood that you just explored was locked in that room and turned into a clicker. And he got bit right as he shut the door. So not only is he not going to get justice for his daughter, but he's just killed his whole neighborhood. So anyway, then after finding that note, you find him and he's a clicker and he's got a bow on his back. You kill him. That's how you get the bow. It's such a good 
just story that's just right in the middle, you know, right in the middle of the game. You know, if you don't read the lore, you're just going to get to that bow and be like, what was this all about? But it's so much deeper of an experience having read all that other stuff. So anyway, all I have to say, if you're going to play it, really, really play it. Um, once I beat the game, probably next week, I'm going to, I want to do more of a deep dive into spoilers of what I liked and what I didn't like about the story. Um, but obviously I haven't finished that and I don't want to spoil that for anyone else watching. So we'll do that next week. But anyway, Stephen, did you have another game that you wanted to talk about or am I, do I need to keep rolling? Outward. Outward. That's right. Yeah. Talk about outward. I, when you text us about that. I went and watched some stuff and it looks very, very interesting. So it's imagine if they took like the survival mechanics of something like seven days to die or any other hunger, thirst, disease, hot, cold kind of survival game has like they took that and they put it in a fantasy RPG that basically says, hey, you're, you start off as no one. You're just a guy. Mm hmm. Um, that's, that's what outward is. And it's on the steam summer sale. It's like 16 bucks. Um, it's two player co-op, which is the reason I got it. Um, but it's certain, there's certain things about it. Like you hear it and you think, wow, that sounds miserable. Like Mm -hmm. the fact that you do have to eat food, you do have to, to, to make sure you have water. Uh, you have to rest. You can't fast travel. Just stuff like that is is just like, I don't know about this. But it it has this nostalgic kind of labor of love feel to it when you play it mm-hmm. to where when I was leaving the village when I was playing it, um, I was like, OK, I, I, it's almost like it's dawn right now. I need to go to the vendor like the merchant, make sure I've got some bread uh, uh, a weapon to make sure I can defend myself. I got to make sure my clothes can withstand the cold. Um, I've got to go over to the fountain and refill my water skin because every single time you go out into the, like outside of a city, even if you've been there before, it's a perilous journey. Mm -hmm. And there's something really charming about that, about the whole thing where you may know where a skill vendor is that can teach you magic. Um, but you have to get there <laughs> mm-hmm. like, and the fact that to get there could be this story of its own about how you were ambushed by bandits and maybe they killed you. They killed mm-hmm. you when you die in this game, you just get knocked out and you get a random, um, respawn scenario or defeat scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, like you, if you get killed by bandits, you may wake up in their camp, um, mm-hmm. without your stuff. Um, and so you have to get out. So like that could happen. Um, but it, it's, it's one of those games that does a great job at creating stories, like the joys of the journey, all that kind of stuff where, where the, the game really is in the things that most AAA mainstream games just skip over for the sake of time and convenience. Like that's where the game is here. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I and I really like that. There's something really charming about it, and I want to play more of it. I had to start over the, already once. I didn't have mm-hmm. much time in it, but I stupidly went to investigate a bandit outpost, mm-hmm. um, and got killed by a spike trap because I wasn't looking. Mm-hmm. And then when I respawned in the bandit outpost uh, with none of my gear, it started snowing. Oh no! Didn't even know it could snow. Okay, my watch is trying to update the weather channel. <laughs> what? Okay, shut up. Shut um, up. <laughs> but I didn't even know it could snow. And then I wake up and it's snowing, and there are bandits everywhere outside of the little hut that I've been put in. Uh-huh. And I end up dying trying to get to my backpack outside so many times that my backpack disappears. Oh my gosh! So I lost everything. Um, which you. I could have just been like, okay, that's a lot of work lost, but my character's still here. I can Uh still pick it up and keep going. Uh, But I just didn't want to because I was so early on. (laughs) No, yeah, no, I totally Um, get that. Yeah, but um, magic apparently is really interesting in this game to Mm -hmm. where you don't just cast spells. It's it's described as like ritualistic. 
kind of mm-hmm. a, a ritualistic process to where you may do something. It's kind of like alchemy in Full Metal Alchemist, mm-hmm. where you create you could create a transmutation circle of fire, mm-hmm. and then you could do other effects that work off of that fire, and that's kind of how you do magic. So you can mm-hmm. combine spells to make different effects and stuff like that. It sounds really interesting, like a really mm-hmm. involved kind of. And and that's 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 maybe what the charm is is that there's just everything has a process everything right. is involved mm-hmm. um, and I and I really like that I'm I'm really hoping that Jeremy picks it up on PC or that somebody picks it up on PlayStation um, yeah I, I'm thinking about getting it on a PlayStation it, it, it what's really impressive about it is when you look at it it compared to like a AAA game it doesn't look great. But when you talk about, oh, yeah, like nine people worked together and made this, it's nine really impressive. people. Yeah, it's that's... really, really impressive. Um, and it's like it's a it's a pretty sizable game because mm-hmm. I think I'm only in the first area, but I think there's five areas total. And then yeah. they just came out with an expansion. Yeah, they're just uh, a new expansion is coming. It came out like a year ago, I think. Yeah, maybe did. two. So it's it's it fairly ago. new. Um, but anyway, that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of expansions, uh, the last thing we're going to talk about here in catch up is I played uh, the Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion, Isle of Armor. I played through what I'm assuming is the first half. Hey, oh. Keep talking. My mom called. Uh, oh, you're good. Just keep talking. I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, I played through um, the it, first Kaylin. half of a yeah, count it, Kalen. That's a, that's a mom call in the middle of the podcast. Um <laughs> I played through what I'm assuming is half of it. I got uh, the new Pokemon, uh, Cubfu, um, who in they kind of pitch the DLC as you get Cubfu and you're training with Cubfu to get him to evolve. And I forget what his evolution form is, and I think it's different in both games, but I digress. Uh, and that's kind of the story of this game. Well, like, I played for like a two-hour stream or so, and uh, we got Cub Fu in those two hours. So there was this whole deal where we were introduced to the Galarian Slowpoke. We were introduced to the new rival slash new gym leader um, who is a poison type. I forget what my girl's name was. I want to say Abby, but that's not right. I'm thinking of Last of Us. Um, anyway, it's not important. She's a poison type. Uh, she was great. It was really fun. Uh, I really, really enjoyed the little bit that I played so far. Uh, it's more Pokemon. You know, if you, if you liked, um, uh, if you liked sword or shield and you want to do, you want to play more, this is more, you know, they added more, uh, new or not. They added more, um, not new Pokemon, but more of the original from the, from the Pokedex. Um, there's lots of new, uh, additions, the new area is really cool. Everything in the DLC is a wild area. So there's uh, there's Pokemon everywhere. Um, they did this really great quality of life feature. And I wish that it was translatable across the game. But it's only for the DLC area. And that's um, you, you can have a partner Pokemon following you around. Um, and, and I think they call it like take a walk with your Pokemon. Um, so the Pokemon just follows you around and and is there live following you, and I wish that was across the board. It's it just is crazy to me that they added that feature for this, but they didn't let that translate across the other. At least at the very least, the the main wild area. I don't know why they didn't let that translate, but whatever. It is what it is. They added some new clothes and stuff. We did a lot of shopping in the uh, live stream, so you can go. You can actually probably go see everything that they added clothes wise because. I'm pretty sure I looked at it all. Um, anyway, it was a lot of fun. A nice little update to Pokemon, which I'm always all about. So it was great. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of Trollcast. We do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, there's a couple things you can do to help us out. Number one, if you're watching on YouTube, you're already at trollgames.com. You can like this video, leave a comment, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, but we're not only on YouTube. We're also on Facebook. Uh, if you can watch the podcast on Facebook, um, that's at Chortle Games on Facebook. Uh, you can't watch the podcast on Twitter and Twitch, but we are on those platforms for all of our live streaming. Uh, on Twitter, we're at Chortle Games, and then on Twitch, we are TV, uh, twitch.tv slash Chortle underscore games. Uh, so feel free to follow us 
uh, in all of those places. Um, the podcast is, of course, on podcast services like Apple Podcasts, so be sure to follow us there, uh, leave reviews, all that good stuff. Uh, this is not the only thing we do. Like I mentioned, we do live streams throughout the week, uh, so we will be having a live stream Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. Thursday is going to be Destiny, me and Steven, keeping on that Destiny grind. I want to get to the point where we can do the dungeon. I don't know that we're, we're not close to that, but I'd like to get to that point. And yeah. uh, I'm Steven's going to do Friday's stream. I'm going to do Saturday's stream. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to play yet. Uh, so we might be putting some votes in there uh, in the Discord. So if you're not in the Discord, be sure to follow and hang around in there. And on that note, we also have the forward compatible review and play through for July coming up. So we're gonna put some games up for a vote in the uh, forward compatible Discord channel. Um, so go there, vote on what you'd like to see us play the, for the, the month. The voting will probably close um, that like on Saturday. On, on the 4th. O- on the 4th, yes. We're gonna celebrate Independence Day by closing the voting Yes. in this democracy okay so that's yes. that's what you have to look forward to also if you have disney plus hamilton comes out on july 3rd all right i'm very excited about that i haven't seen hamilton because and i haven't wanted to i'm a big theater guy but haven't wanted to because i didn't want to fight people for tickets but now it's on the tv so i can't wait to watch that anyway i digress we got a great week of shows coming up for you so be sure to stay tuned and like and subscribe and all that good stuff so steven thanks for hanging out thank you guys for being here see y'all next time